Hi, I'm Kelly Vaughn, and this is Inside ND. Well, one of the issues, um, major issues in our community is addressing the challenges of our young people. Um, and we have somebody in the studio who is not only aware of those issues, but he offers a unique solution to the problems of our youth. And he is Pastor Jeffrey Pitts. Hello. All right. A junior, by the way. That's it. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Uh, he is the lead pastor of Upper Room of Indianapolis, Upper Room Church. Yes, ma'am. Welcome to Inside Indy. Thanks for having me. He's back. I'm back again. He's back with a new uh, album. Yes, ma'am. Um, and the album is addressing some of the issues in our community and beyond, really, the world. Mm -hmm. Issues of the world. Mm -hmm. um, but let's talk about those issues because you see so much Oh, at absolutely. your church in terms of serving the community. And let's talk about the community you serve. Absolutely. Well, I pastor a church in Mars Hill, the Mars Hill area, like of uh, Farnsworth and McClure, Kentucky Avenue, around that area. A lot of drugs, a lot of poverty, a lot of violence. It's just a, um, some people come into the neighborhood and say it's like a third world country. Really? I, yeah, it's like, it's like a forgotten city. I tell them this is God's city. This is where God's at, you know. A lot of... Um, just a lot of people who have who've grown up rough, hmm. and uh, and we're the, we we got the church planted right in the center. To do, I mean, people come to the church; they'll put their heroin needles at the altar, they put their dope at the altar, they put their pills at the altar. We're, we reach anybody. I don't care where you come from, small, young, tall, rich, poor. Come, come on, we gonna on. we gonna preach Jesus. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> come on. And and you're you're speaking from experience, right? Let's talk about oh, okay about your past. About my past. Uh -huh. Well, I was in a, I was a drug dealer. You were a dealer, not just a... I was a real dealer. I mean, I, I, I dealt real life drugs. I mean, I was in and out of jail most of my life. Hung around gang members. Um, what, what were you selling? Um, a lot of drugs. <laughs> 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 you know, <laughs> drugs. Drugs, okay. Yeah, okay. yes. Okay, wow. Okay, and, and what else? What else were you, were you doing out there? And I'm only asking you that, not, not to make you look bad, because obviously you're the pastor mm, of a very right. successful church here in Indianapolis. But because I think if people know where you came from, then they yeah. know you're yeah. the expert on ad addressing the problem, fixing the, helping to address those issues. Absolutely. Well, I, you know, I, sold a lot of, I sold a lot of cocaine, a lot of pills, a lot of marijuana. I sold a lot, mostly marijuana, pounds of marijuana, um, Basically, anything I could get my hands on that it could hit the streets that's selling at that time. You know, it's kind of like, what's, what's the hottest car that's selling or what's the best music that's out? Like, what's the best drug that's out right now that'll make us money? So mm -hmm. I did that and then uh, landed up in jail uh, about nine, ten times. And it took me that many times to, you know, really. Because, see, I was a broken kid anyway. My father passed away about a year and a half ago from alcoholism. Mm. And um, I love your dad. Oh, uh, he's a sweetheart. Yeah, you knew and my dad. Born didn't. again. Born so again. Let the people know he that. He did get yeah. born again. Yes, yes he did. Yeah, he did right. get born again. And I, I truly believe he's with the Lord. But he had he battled his own demons. I mean, none of us are perfect, you know? Right, right. So, yeah. Okay. Okay, he was a police officer, too. He, he was a police officer. And I truly believe that, uh, not to go off topic, but truly believe that uh, a lot of that, Contributed to his drinking, being oh, a police oh, officer. Oh, yeah, yeah. We hear that the about the trauma. Um, yeah. yeah, you think about uh, soldiers who serve over. Oh, yeah. Uh, seize the post-traumatic stress disorder, and the same thing. All all police officers are, are local soldiers as opposed to. Oh, come on now. Uh, soldiers yeah. of a foreign um, war. Absolutely. Okay. Wow. Okay. So then, what happened? What changed in your life? In my, in my life? Uh, well, when I got out of jail, I got connected to a, a powerful church in Avon called Bread of Life Ministries. And I mean, I'm fresh out the county. I smelt like ramen noodles. You know what I mean? I still, I mean, I, I'm fresh out and uh, God just led me to this church. I got connected with some good Christians and uh, entered right into a revival. It was when the Lakeland Revival was going on down, to, uh, down in Florida. And then they brought the, um, some people from Florida back to the church and laid hands on me. I caught the Holy Ghost. And then that's all she wrote. I was gone. I mean, I started getting delivered from drugs. God started delivering me. For, he delivered me from the alcohol. I battled with mental health problems in my life. Most of my life, I mean, I was molested. I was abused, you know. Oh, uh, just a lot of stuff happened to me in my life. And um, I should be dead right now, you know. Multiple overdoses. Uh, but God kept me, you know. And so I'm all over the world now. I tell everybody about Jesus. I'm just trying to let somebody know. Like, see, you hear people hear Jesus and like, oh, no. 
You know, it's a, uh, you're going to preach down my throat. It's, it's turn or burn, hell or high, hell, hell in this. And really, when you get to know him, when you really get to know him, your life changes. Mm-hmm. Like, I'm, I'm a walking testimony of the goodness of God. Uh, most of the people I grew up with have been murdered and, uh, or suicides or in prison. I mean, I, about 70 to 80 percent of them. So how do you, using the word of God and your ministry, how are you working to solve those issues in the community and, and with the young people and their challenges? My goodness, I, I go, just, just like I'm doing right here. Telling my story. We have the church out there where we're creating uh, mental health groups. We have a, actually a woman's trauma group that's in the church right now for the ladies. And I just reach out to anybody I can. I've been asked to go um, minister at colleges. I don't even, I want to make this on the note. I don't have a high school diploma. I'm from the ghetto, and I've been asked to go minister at colleges to teach the, the, the students who are getting their master's in psychology. Wow. And to become psychiatrists, to teach them about the brain. I'm a very, uh, people said I should have been a neurosurgeon because I, I just learned so much about the brain and mental health and how to retrain your brain and how to, you know, uh, be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Mm-hmm. Amen. So Amen. I'm reaching everybody I can possible. I'm shouting it. I'm shouting it from the rooftop. And you're rapping it. And I'm rapping it. And you're rapping it. And, and so, I'm rapping it yeah, too. And I know you got a new album out, but before we yeah. talk about the album, I want to go to a, a clip of you. Um, Rapping. Do it. Okay, and what, what, what are we watching here when we watch this? What oh, we actually, this is an actual uh, clip of, uh, that I was on um, a feature with uh, a man of God named Jeff So Free. He made a, a song called The Plug, the, the remix, and Jesus is the plug. He connects us to everything, and he put me on. This is just an open door to uh, let everybody know what they can kind of expect on the album, you know, about how my style is and how I get down. So. Okay, so let's watch you get down, Pastor Jeffrey Pitts, Jr., here now. Wow, you are working it on that video. All right. Amen. Amen. Where'd you learn to rap so good? Jesus. Nah. (laughs) Nah, There's Jay-Z and then there's (laughs) Jesus. Right. You something else, girl. Yeah, uh, you know what? I've always had a, uh, a heart to write music ever since I was a kid. And I just wrote and then I just started rapping and then... I remember one day I got saved, about a year after I got saved, I said, what if I just started rapping for Jesus? And then boom, just started doing albums. I got Without Religion out, did the mixtape, and now this is my second real album. Uh, shout out to Smooth Peter Bishop my um, and Hear You Music. I mean, I'm connected to a lot of different, you know, I got my own record label, Persevere Records. All right. You know, so we just, we just doing okay. it, you know. Okay, so let's talk about the album, because again, the goal here is to impact Boom. Not just your young people, but people in general, right? Mm-hmm. Adults as well. Right. Uh, you have a song on the, uh, uh, a rap song, Her Notebook? Her Notebook. Her Notebook is a song about a young girl who's been bullied at school, who battles with depression. And um, that's a very powerful, I mean, very powerful song. You can get that on, the album's on iTunes okay. and Spotify. It's called The Resurrection by Pastor JP. But Her Notebook is about a young girl who goes to school and uh, is depressed and is contemplating suicide. And she, she is a cutter. And uh, she's not able to explain this and no one understands her. But then through the song, she gets saved. And her ah. family's broken. And then she ends up getting her, take it, telling her mother, you know, hey, let's forget all this going on, a lot, all this pain. Let's, go to, let's start going to church. And then she ends up getting saved. She gets saved and then ends up going to church. And she gets supernaturally healed and goes back to school. And she's not the same person. Okay, wow. Valley of the Bones? Valley of the Bones. That's one of my hit. That's one of the number ones on the album. Valley of the Bones is just about a, uh, a, you know, like Ezekiel in the Valley. It's about just raising up an army for the Lord. About te- we don't take no drama or no mess from the enemy. We are powerful, and you know, uh, we are anointed, sanctified, filled with the Holy Ghost. And that song is to empower us to just, you know, Valley of the Bones. I can hear it now in my head. You know, go ahead, it's Valley. Just, of, go ahead, it's like, a little bit. Valley of the Bones. Yes, sir. I'm a walking aftermath. Let your breath come like a wind. I speak here right now at my mouth. Uh huh. This army rising up. 
I'm wounded, but we're ready. This church has got to rise. His glory on me heavy. I mean, that thing is hard, boy. All get right, that, go get right, that album. Right, go right, get that right, album. You got me going. Okay. Get that album. And then Since You Left Me. What's that about? Since You Left Me. My fa- that was the song I wrote about my father. Uh, about okay. him dying. Okay. Yeah, ever okay. since he left me. And, that, and speaking of your father, you're a father now. I am a father. You're a little girl so cute. Isn't she beautiful? She is like the star of Facebook. She oh, is. my gosh. She I mean, is. you see people put their babies up there all the time. She's but famous. every time you're up there, I stop. And I watch, and I'm like, what is it about this little baby and those cheeks? She, you, she oh my God. You spit her out. I, right you out. spit that baby yeah, out. She's so beautiful. Her <laughs> name's Meadow. She's so beautiful. You know, she, she's, I mean, she is spunky. I mean, she, I, I'm praying that, you know, whatever God has for her, I'm just, I, I take her everywhere with me. You see it. I'm surprised you didn't bring her today. I know I didn't take her because I didn't know I was, I was supposed to have her on the set, but she, she she she'll be here some other time. Okay. Trust me. Next show. Next, next show. show. When you come back, because he is a regular. Hey, absolutely. Here on Inside Indy. Okay. Absolutely. Again, where can we get uh, the Resurrection? Uh, the album, The Resurrection. You can get it on Spotify. You can get it on iTunes. You can get it on Amazon. Um, I mean, just go check it out. I mean, literally, it, it, it's a powerful album that empowers just anybody, the youth, the old alike. Make sure you go cop that today. Pastor Jeffrey Pitts, Jr., lead pastor of uh, Upper Room Church of Indianapolis. Thanks so much for joining us. Yes, ma'am. Thank you. On Inside Indy. And we'll be back with more here on Inside Indy after these. Hi, and welcome to Inside Indy. October is Fall Car Care Month, which should mean preparing your vehicle for a change in the weather. But according to a new survey, an overwhelming number of consumers are spending more time and more money on preparing their fall wardrobe than their car maintenance. Joining us to share inexpensive tips to save hassles and to save headaches, auto expert and host of History Channel's upcoming series, The Ride That Got Away, Courtney Hansen. Hi, Courtney. Thank you for having me on. Courtney, <laughs> what did the survey find about driver's habits and preparing for fall and winter driving? Well, a new survey by Toyo Tires tells us that more than half of those surveyed would rather spend their time and money preparing their fall wardrobe than they would getting their vehicle ready for the change in season. And I'm all for buying a cool new pair of boots, but the survey also tells us that a third of the drivers out there don't prepare their vehicle for the winter months. So I'd like to help change that. What are some easy tips for drivers to prepare for the colder months ahead? It gets really cold here in Indiana. Well, whether you live in a place that gets battered by snow or you just see a moderate change in, in, in season, um, I've got some quick and easy tips that are, that are low cost and anybody can follow. So I'm working with Toyo Tires, and so why don't we start there? Um, there's the good old tread test where you take it. This only costs a penny. You take a penny and you put it head down in the tread. And if you can see all of Lincoln's head, your tires are bald and it's time to replace them. Uh, once a month, I recommend taking a good look at your tires, making sure that there's no excessive uh, wear or uneven wear and that there's no cuts or punctures in them. And if so, you want to immediately take uh, your, your vehicle to a local tire dealer. And then also check them out to make sure that there aren't any objects lodged in, in there that shouldn't be, like rocks or glass or metal. And then moving on to the wipers. Uh, obviously, you want to see outside of your windshield so that you, you're driving safely. Um, and I recommend changing your wiper blades. These guys are going to be doing double and even triple duty with all that snow and, and um, ice. And so to change them, it's very easy. You just pop them off and um, click on the new blades. And then you don't have to spend the money having someone else do it for you later. And then the third tip, a third of the drivers out there don't have emergency kits in their vehicles. And so my advice about that is simple, get one. Yeah. Now, what do you think we should have in an emergency kit? 
Yeah, you definitely want the first aid kit and then jumper cables, flashlight flares. I recommend uh, maybe hand warmers and, and like you said, something warm to bundle up and then energy bar, water. Those are some of the essentials. Where can viewers get more information? Yes, sure. For more information on tire maintenance, go to toyotires.com. And we're back here on Inside Indy, and uh, this is Domestic Violence Awareness Month, and it will be the subject of a keynote speech that is a part of the Black Nurses Association luncheon that's coming up very quickly here in the month of October, and joining us here to tell us all about it are, we have Linda Ellis, who is the Executive Director of the Black Nurses Association, Chapter 46. Yes. In Indy. Welcome, Linda. Thank Welcome you. back. Thank you so very much. All right. And then we have Maria Cruz Fernandez. Uh, you are a registered nurse and uh, with the Black Nurses Association, Chapter 46 as well, right? Yes, sir. All right. Yeah. Welcome to Inside Thank Indy. Thank you. And then we also have the Reverend Sally Morris. You are president mm -hmm. uh, yes. of the Black Nurses Association. You're a registered nurse. And what's BSN? Bachelor of Science. Bachelor of Science. Mm -hmm. Nursing. Okay. Yes. All right. Welcome to the show. Thank you. Wow. This mm -hmm. luncheon is a, 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 a big deal. Yes. Okay. And so I'll let yes. Linda begin by telling us date, time, and location, and who we can expect to hear from to talk about these domestic violence issues. The uh, date of the event is Friday, October 26, 2018. The topic and theme we're really excited about is domestic violence, the rippling effect. Mm. And our keynote speaker is uh, Vicki Winan of the Winan family. Wow. And she's excited. She's looking forward to coming to Indy. What's up, everybody? This is your girl, Vicki Winans. And guess what? I'm coming to Indianapolis, Indiana on Friday, October the 26th. I'll be there for the luncheon for the Black Nurses of Indianapolis Incorporated. It's their 14th annual luncheon and fundraiser dealing with some serious issues like domestic violence and more. Listen, you know me. We gonna dance a little. I'm gonna speak a little. We gonna sing a little. I might cry a little. But most of all, we gonna laugh a lot as we defeat the enemy of domestic violence. The Bible says we can do all things through Christ, and we will survive this all. So listen, I will see you at the luncheon. Um, she'll be, again be coming to Indianapolis, and people can buy tickets, because that's what this is about, is getting people to uh, the luncheon. How can they get tickets for the luncheon? Uh, they can reach us at 317-920-4950. Okay, now I know Maria is going to tell us that in Espanol, sí. también. Mm -hmm. okay. También, sí. También. <laughs> so go right ahead. Mm -hmm. uh, para la, el lunch que tenemos el octubre 26, 2018, eh, se va a tratar sobre do, eh, violencia doméstica y es un efecto que es, a, abarca todo lo que es el círculo familiar. Eh, también este, estará presente la la violencia sobre jóvenes que van a la escuela, que tienen este, muchos conflictos con sus, uh, sus novios o amigos también que, que participan en eso. Entonces se ha descubierto que en las escuelas hay mucha violencia doméstica. Okay. I heard domestic violence, escuelas, schools. I get bits and pieces, okay? It's in Spanish, like sixth grade all the way through college, and I can't speak a lick of it, but I'm certainly picking up some. I, I get the gist of what you said. Okay, and of course, our Hispanic viewers did understand, and pretty much Linda gave us the, the English version, so this is really cool. I like the way this is going here, that, that we're letting everybody know, because this message is, is so important for people to be um, aware of what's going on. So why do each of you feel it's such an important issue? And I want... Um, 
Reverend Morris to share her views on that. Why is this so important for Black Nurses Association to be addressing this issue? I think that is important because it's so widespread. It's, and it's so, uh, it's something that we need to know because we, we have missed it for so long and, and, and it affects our life. Did you want to add to that, Linda, in terms of who's most affected by domestic violence? Well, I would say that basically the rippling effect, mm -hmm. that's the reason why it's part of the thing. Uh, to give you a visual or either imagery, think of throwing a rock or either stone in some mm -hmm. water, you can see the rippling effect. Mm -hmm. So that means generations before us mm -hmm. and the generations after us. Mm -hmm. So we make certain that uh, awareness and education we would help them to see through the speaker and advocacy, uh, they would know some of the signs, the risk factors. And one thing that troubles me greatly is in Indiana alone, we pulled some stats that uh, this was as of September 2017, the domestic violence uh, census. And it showed 1,214 domestic violence victims were provided shelter or housing of the 46 Indiana services, and 654 were provided legal support and counseling services, and 479 actually contacted the hotline. Mm. And in Marion County alone, in 2016, there were estimated 10,797 domestic violence victims, and 83% were women. Wow. And rates are higher, seemingly, in low-income or adults with lacking a high school diploma. Yes. And another thing is the prevalence of really incident actually happens in three hotspots, and this is according to their statistic, 46201, 46202, 46218. Mm -hmm. And then another stats according to race and ethnicity, African American females is 17.7. The males, men are actually abused as well, mm -hmm. okay? And they were at 10.4. And uh, Hispanic females, which numbers are alarming, 24.8. Mm. Male, Hispanic males, 14. Mm -hmm. And then white females, 22.4. Males, white males, 15 and combined total in Indiana was 22.5 for females and males 14.8 and total 18.7. And if you compare that with the national rate, that's extremely high. Mm -hmm. In Indiana, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Indiana, we actually need uh, to become more aware. And when you think of the female, the alarming rate, 83%, that's a high number. We raise our children, and it's very, very important, and I'm gonna say this, it's important that we get the message in the community to the churches. It's not contained to a specific group of people, mm -hmm. but I'd like no, to ask yeah. Maria, um, do, do, is it prevalent in the Hispanic community as well? Do you see it, do you, do you feel what we're talking about here in terms of statistics? Yes, it's a lot of Hispanics have the same problem mm -hmm. too about the violence domestic and and the they they scary and they don't talking about this mm. and they are uh, hide in the family and they are uh, defend to the uh, husband or defend to the son or defend to the daughter who's uh, who's uh, hide in the family but we don't know what happened and, okay. but a lot a lot of families have the same problem they know what they're talking about. Mm. They know what they're denounced to the police. They don't call no, nothing. Right, okay. Mm. You know, and, and I, I just wanna make this point real quickly about the statistics. You said 10,000 people, and I know even as we're sitting here, somebody somewhere, uh, typically, typically it is a woman, even though the rates, we do have men who are abused, but um, it's happening right now as we speak. Yes. Mm -hmm. And this is not to belittle the, the cause in, in terms of when especially people of color are approached by police officers. Mm -hmm. But w when it does happen, it's a national story. It might be one or two that month, but probably at the end of the day, there have been 100 women across the country who were victimized, many of them dead. Yes. I'm just asking, mm -hmm. where's the march for that? Where's the kneeling 
for that. I'm just putting it out there. Mm. Okay. So anyway, mm. <laughs> <laughs> let's go over the date, time, location for the Black Nurses Association's luncheon featuring keynote speaker, Vicki uh, Winans. They can go to the website, okay. www.bna-indy.org. Once again, www.bna, acronym for Black Nurses Association, okay. dash okay. okay. They can purchase tickets or they can call the office, 317-920-4950. Okay. And it is, will be held at Ivy Tech, the main, one of the main campuses, 2820 North Meridian. Okay. Oh, from okay. 11 to 2 p.m. Okay. Well, we're looking forward to it. It's going to be uh, powerful, powerful, and empowering. Uh, Linda Ellis, yes. um, Maria Cruz Fernandez, and then uh, the Reverend Sally Morris. Thanks so much for joining us. All right. Thank, thank, thank you, you for having us. On Inside Indy. And thank you for joining us. I'm Kelly Vaughn. We'll see you next time. Adios. Right. <laughs> Adios. <laughs>